Teal Hymnal to 1017. We're going to sing We Are Building a New Way, which is a theme for our stewardship program. Say hello to the people, actual humans that are next to you. What's up? Our call to worship comes from the gray hymnal, number 434. Glasses are 
essential. May we be reminded here of our highest aspirations and inspired to bring our gifts of love and service to the altar of humanity. May we know once again that we are not isolated beings, but connected in mystery and miracle to the universe, to this community, and to each other. By anonymous, so was a woman. <laughs> Please join me in saying our child's finding words with me there up here on the screen. We like the child, the symbol of our Unitarian Universal faith, as a beacon of hope for all to see justice, dignity, and compassion, and in celebration of the life, truth, and meaning we share together. Now, all please join me in saying our affirmation. Love of the spirit of the church and the service of the spirit. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. You might want to turn to your brief, your gray hymnal number 95. Right here. And Molly, if you would come help me sing that song, I would be so great.
Hawaii. Woo! How is it? That was loud. How's everybody today? I'm so glad to see all of you here. I can't stand it. I'm so excited. Well, I just saw one of the kids yawn really loudly, so I hope that's not an indication that we're not being excited. Now, our Time for All Ages today is going to start with an important announcement, two important announcements. First of all, it's Clark Lindo's birthday, so let's go. Our RE class is on Wednesday at 5 p.m. We don't really have announcements like we do on virtual services, so I just want to plant that in your brain. If you want to come and join us at 5 p.m. on Wednesday, come see me and I'll let you know the details. All right, so today our Time for All Ages is a story called Sustaining the Tree of Life, and it's by Lynn Gardner. The tree stood in the middle of the village. Its trunk was so large that it took six people holding hands to reach around it. So everybody reach your arms out really wide. It took six of that holding hands to get around this tree. Its roots were really strong and really wide and its branches spread out over the village square. It offered shelter from the rain and shade from the summer sun. Its fruit was juicy, sweet, and plentiful. The people of the village loved the tree. Children played beneath it and climbed in its lowest branches. Young people knew that if you whispered your dreams to the tree, they were more than likely to come true. People who proclaimed their love or friendship from one another beneath its branches found their relationships to be nourishing, and elders discovered that their sweetest memories could be counted on when they were near the great tree. The tree had been witnessed to so much, and when the breezes blew through the leaves, one could hear echoes of generations Laughter, conversations, dreams, prayers, and songs. Animals loved the tree too. Rabbits lived in burrows under its roots. Squirrels and monkeys lived in the branches. And bats and birds flew in to eat its abundant fruit. The tree seemed to buzz with life. One day, a traveling merchant arrived in the village. He rested in the shade and ate two pieces of delicious fruit. This fruit is incredible, he said. I would like to have some to sell in the next villages that I visit. Who owns this tree? No one owns the tree, replied a villager. If anything, we belong to it. Well then, if no one owns the tree, then no one will mind if I pick all of the fruit, said the merchant, and he began to fill up the basket. I mind, said the villager. Today I am keeper of the tree. What do you mean keeper of the tree? We each take our turn being here with the tree. We could never own it. We are here as protectors, as sustainers. That's ridiculous. This tree doesn't need you. You can just take what you need, take what you want. The tree will continue to live. But the villager couldn't be persuaded. Sir, this tree isn't like that. We don't come here to take from it, even though we receive a lot. We are keepers of this tree because this is where we are nourished. This is where some of our most precious memories are and where our people have dreamed. This is where we remember who we want to become. Well, said the merchant, you may think this tree is very special, but it still doesn't need you to sit with it. That's preposterous. Ah, replied the villager, the tree itself may not need me, but what of others who come by? Just this morning, I sat with a woman whose heart was heavy with worry. Had I not been here, she would have had to carry that weight alone. And this afternoon, a tired couple came by and they rested with me. They said they had been looking for a place like this. 
And then an elder came by and we watched the birds and the branches together. And now you are here. You were confused about what this tree is and how to be with it. Imagine if you had arrived and not found anyone here to talk with. You might, might have continued to think that everything you do is all about yourself. Luckily for you, my friend, I'm here to let you know that when you care for the tree of life, it becomes about so much more than just you. And the merchant sat for a while in the shade, thinking about these ideas that felt new and a little bit challenging. As the sun went down, he picked up his bag and headed out of town, whistling a song that he hadn't thought of in years. On his way, he shared a smile with each person he met, his heart feeling strangely light and joyful. And the people of the village? They continued to sustain the tree of life, to care for one another, and to share their gifts with grace and gratitude. May it be so for the each of us. All right, so that was our story for the day. And since it's our first time meeting for a while, I want to make sure that all of our younger UUs are comfortable with what we're going to do. So Pastor Kaya is going to sing uh, this little light of mine with everybody else. And then we'll exit out this back door if you want to go to Artie. If you want to stay with your grown-ups, that's totally fine. It's up to you. And then we're going to go out of the building to the playground to our left. Is everybody comfortable with where we're going? Younger people? Thumbs up? Awesome. All right. Then join me in singing us out to Artie. Thanks. <laughs> down doors in an emergency. Hope should shove you out of the door because it will take everything you have to steer the future away from endless war, from the annihilation of the Earth's treasures, and the grinding down of the poor and marginal. To hope is to give yourself to the future, and that commitment to the future is what makes the present inhabitable. So, we're talking about money today. How many people want to run? <laughs> yeah. I want you to kind of stretch your idea of what money is because money is just energy. Everybody has it. You may not actually have it in physical, physical dollars, but you've got it. You've got energy. Now, have you, have you ever heard of tithing? Okay, if people who grew up in the Christian church, you're used to being expected to give 10% of your income to the church. No Unitarian has ever done that. <laughs> ever. In fact, 
Unitarians, we are not, we are small, but we are actually rich, wealthy, financially. And the people who give the most money are not the people who have the most money. The people who give the most money are young families. My dream as a minister would be that you would know why you were giving the money. That you would have a vision and you would have a mission. Like, if you're a Christian, you grow up thinking about the mission field. Anybody ever hear of that, the mission field? Okay, what's our mission? What's a mission? It's an understanding, an understanding of what we're doing in the world. Why are we here? I'm going to ask you a whole bunch of questions, and I want you to think about them as you're making out your pledge for this year, because I'm not going to look over your shoulder and see how much you gave. Nobody knows but you and the administrator. Mm -hmm. The whole people. The treasure. But the point is, we're giving money for a vision. <laughs> And what is our vision? What is a church? Anybody got any ideas about what a church is? Because we don't have a building, but we're a church, right? Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of the Brazos Valley. That's us. That's us. And we carry it around here. We don't have the building yet. Lord, they haven't even put the seal up yet. But we've got a foundation. We have a foundation, did we not? And we have a spiritual foundation. The people who raise the money for the church that we sold, that's paying for the church that we're in, those people were thinking of us way before some of us were even born. So what is our mission? What's our vision? What is the church? Does anybody have an idea about what the church is? Not just what it does for you, but why does it exist? What what are we investing in? What's our dream? Anybody have any ideas? Got one? Community and love. Community and love. Awesome. Anybody else? Do we want to change the world? <laughs> yeah? Do we want to just change Brian and College Station? That would be a tremendous task, would it not? <laughs> All three of the living churches in the Mariah College Station are working to do just that. So I've got some more questions for you to help you. So who who are we? When somebody says, um, I heard this, I heard a basic idea of this speech where they said, you need an elevator speech. When somebody says, oh, what church do you go to? And you go, I go to the Unitarian Universalist Church. And they go, what's that? Is that a cult? <laughs> what is it? What are we? No, one God, no hell. One God, maybe, and no hell, or maybe some more God. Uh, love. Um, what? What else do you think it is? What makes us different? Besides that we're heretics. Except. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. Search for truth. Yeah. Search for truth. Awesome. And truth changes with different people, right? And we support each other in our search for our own unique truth. As well as we provide a space where people are welcome to explore. Because not everybody knows. When you got here, did you know what you believed in? Did you already know? Have you changed your mind? Most people do. And if you look at it historically, a lot of people do. And one of the things about stewardship that's tricky is that you might start looking at your neighbors and going, well, they're not giving as much as I'm giving. I'm giving this. And they're not giving anything. I just want to talk to you for a second about Concord, Massachusetts and all the transcendentalists that lived around Ralph Waldo Emerson. Ralph Waldo Emerson toured all the time. He was on the road constantly. And you know who cut his wood? Was Henry David Thoreau. You know who he kept his house together? His wife, Lillian. Her name was Lillian, but she, he asked her to change it to Lillian. It's a long story. <laughs> but he paid, he paid for everybody. He paid the rent for the Alcocks, including Louisa May. 
He, pay, he paid for Nathaniel Hawthorne's house until Nathaniel Hawthorne pay, started paying too much attention to uh, Margaret Fuller, and uh, that annoyed uh, Mr. Emerson, <laughs> who had a thing for Margaret Fuller. Um, every time Margaret Fuller would stay at his house, her guest room was across the hall from his study, and they would send each other letters back and forth. I'm not kidding. And Lillian would always get a headache and go to bed until <laughs> she left. But anyway, what I want to tell you is that Emerson paid for everybody. We would not have any of those people if he hadn't. He had the money. One, he inherited a lot of money because his first wife died. You all know this story? She died, and he was so in love with her that he actually dug her up. It's true. He missed her so bad. But he, um, his family tried to keep her inheritance away from him because she hadn't turned 21 yet for when she died. Mm -hmm. And so he went to court and he won. And so he started out with a fortune. And then he quit being a minister uh, in the actual day-to-day -day sense like I am, like a parish minister. And he became a lecturer and he lectured all over the country. And that money paid for all those people in Concord. It paid for Walden Pond. It paid for all those things. So when you are investing your money in this church, don't worry about what anybody else is doing. Do what you can and make sure you know why you're doing it. Like, what do you get out of it? What's, what's, the, what's the payoff in investing in the church? How are we spending our precious lives? What are we working for? Maybe you can't physically go out and demonstrate for Ukraine. Or maybe you can't physically go out and demonstrate for trans kids. But you want to, and you want to support it, and you have money, so you do that instead. Or you make phone calls, or you write letters, or postcards. You do your part. That's why it's not just money that we're talking about here. It's time and treasure and talent. Maybe you don't have a job right now. But you want to support the church. What can you do? There are things you can do, right? Just think about this stuff. I, I, I want to hear your dreams for the church. Like, there's this great experiment. I wish I had the money to do it. In fact, we'll, we'll do it anyway. I want you to take five dollars of your money, five dollars, and I want you to imagine how you can do good in the world with that five dollars. And do five, do five dollars worth of good in the world, and then come back and tell me about what you did. When we give money to the church, that's what we're doing. We're investing in our ability to make our dream, our mutual dreams, come true, and to make a real difference in the world. Like we're we're like a union, right? One voice. <laughs> It does make a difference, but it's not going to make as much difference as hundreds of people. We are creating the place that people can come into Brian and express how they really feel and ask the questions that they've been asking their whole lives secretly, but maybe their family doesn't support them. We can support them to do that. We can help feed people. We can work for Family Promise. We can do all these things, and it's a, it makes us feel good. That's the thing about giving. People don't talk about this. It's not very capitalistic to talk about this, but giving makes you happy. Knowing that you're part of something bigger than yourself, that's going to make you happy. It's true. I mean, you know, there's scientific proof of it. You don't have to just take my word for it. You can look at all the social justice, social gospel that we've been talking about, all that stuff. We are doing it. That's what you're investing in. You're making good in the world when you do your pledge. We need 190, so how much? 190 something thousand dollars for this year. That pays all our salaries, the people that work here, and it helps helps pay for our programming and make sure that we have all the things happening. When that building opens up, we're going to get a lot of publicity. We're going to be able to invite new people in. What kind of world do you want to make? What kind of place? Um, there's this really great quote I want to read you. It 
Ah. This East German dissident said this. His name was Rudolf Barrow. And he said, when the forms of an old culture are dying, the new culture is created by a few people who are not afraid to be insecure. Now what does that mean? Not afraid to be insecure. You vote with your money and you vote with your time. You came here to the Neal Center when we don't have a building because we opened back up and you invested your time in this church and we are really grateful for that. And when we take up our collection, you put in what you can, and nobody's judging you on it. If you need help, if you're in trouble and you don't have enough money to even pay a dollar commitment to be a member of the church, but you want to stay a member, you can always come to me and I'll put a dollar in for you. It's not about the money necessarily, but it is about the investing your spirit into this place and taking a risk to dream a little bigger than your everyday life. Just a little bit bigger. We want to live out our principles. I'm not saying we're going to do it every day, but we're going to try. And we're, open, we're always learning. We're starting to work on the eighth principle, and we want to make that true in the world. We want the, the world to be equitable and just. Equitable and just. It's like we're playing a... It's like we're playing Monopoly. And some people get $200 every time they pass go. And they get a jail, uh, get out a jail free card every time they go around. You all know this is true. Those people have to play at a different level than the people who always go to jail and never get any money when they go around, right? You know that the world is not fair. We can make the world a little bit more fair by just existing. What is the church and what is your vision for the church? What are your dreams for this place? We're going to have a building next year and we're going to be able to start making those things come true. If we start working on our dreams right now, we're going to be ready. We're going to be ready to meet the new people who come, who want to create the new culture that we're trying to create. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Can I get an or not? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Y'all, we're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing what we can. You know, people are coming and singing to the church. They're bringing their kids. Allison is working on, on stuff all the time. John's working on this stuff all the time. I'm working on stuff all the time. Nancy, our administrator, is working all the time. Uh, uh, Leslie, who is our bookkeeper, works all the time. We think about this church 24-7. And you all think about it too. I want to hear from you. Do you have ideas about what we should be doing? If it's humanly possible and we can make it happen, we'll make it happen. If I can't make it happen, I'll know somebody who can. And we'll go from there. We'll bring people in. We'll bring the right people in. We'll open our doors in the right way. We'll all work on being more hospitable and more friendly. And we're imagining who we are. We as Unitarian Universalists, who do you see in your mind when you hear that word? We. Who's we? I want we to include people who don't look like you and don't earn money the same way you do and don't, and don't uh, think the same way. Um, if we were if we were Islam, one of the tenets of Islam, just like we have our sources and we have our seven principles, is stewardship. Stewardship needs to become a major principle of Unitarian Universalists. And I encourage you to give gratefully, and I pray that you, it will return you tenfold. So that's what I've got to say. And now we're going to have Molly and Joe grace us with a song by Ben Lee. Sorry. Sorry. 
heard amazing this a few times. <clears throat> it's a very, it's called We're All In This Together. Um, it's great for the kids. It's so, so great for the kids, so definitely play it. Um, I'm so proud of all the parents. I'm going to get emotional. So proud of y'all getting up and getting the kids to church. Thank y'all so much. So play this song for the later. Sing along with us.
Now's the time in our service where we have joys and concerns, where we can share the joys that make our lives richer, and we can share the burden of our sorrows. Um, if you'd like to come up, we'll uh, move a mic out so it's easy for you to talk if you'd like to talk. And we have these nice electric candles that sometimes work. <laughs> Have a joy. The online ordination will be at First Unitarian Universalist Church of Austin on April 2nd, which is a Saturday at 11 in the morning. The uh, UU Church of Brazos Valley, the UU Church of Austin, and the UU Church of Victoria will be ordaining me. Um, there will be free food and lots of really good music. And uh, I hope you all can come. If you can't come, we will have a link. You can watch it online if you'd like to. It'll get recorded. Um, we are also helping out on the announcements. So um, Lunch and Learn, um, coming up this week, I'm talking about heresies, official heresies, that connects with what Bobby talked about, about Jesus. But you should know about some of the early heresies, and we are connected to them. We're heretics, y'all. Yeah. Um, and that's at noon on Thursday at the church Zoom website. We have talks every Thursday. You can just show up. If you're eating, you can turn your screen off and just listen if you want. It's very, very informal. So we'd love to have you. Um, also today at noon, the minute you leave here, if you go over to Friends Church, if you want to participate in the Trans Kids Rally, uh, that's happening right after church. Um, anything else I should bring up right away? Sorry? So there's lots of concerns I know that I have right now for the world. Um, I, I live um, in Rostov, not the moon, um, and, and uh, I have family very, very, very close. I consider them my Russian family. They're very close um, to what's going on right now. So that's, of course, a concern I have on, that's weighing on me. But I have a couple of really cool joys um, that I just wanted to share with my church family here. And that is, um, one is that I have been promoted and will now be the, um, the Rudder High School Orchestra Director instead of the Dabble Middle School Orchestra Director. Which is really cool. For those of you who don't know this already, she's not here today, but um, Christine Hastings and I are getting married on June 11th. And Kaya has agreed to do the service, and we have a place, and she has a dress, and we have everything except for the thing to happen. So we are really excited about that. I have a really small family, but my partner Jason has a really large family, and there's four sisters that are the, the head of the, the family, and so one of the sisters just got taken to hospice. So it's going to be a big deal for everyone to get through, I'm just praying, especially for her daughters. I have one joy for this wonderful weather we're having and enjoying it so much. I hope everyone is too. And I have a real sorrow that's really <clears throat> making it difficult, it's difficult for me to think about other things. I'm a house that I um, advocate for children who are taken away from their um, parents. Uh, two little girls are in foster care. I think they're wonderful foster care. One seven and one six, almost one. And we just got word that a mother, who I also communicate with, will be going to prison for 25 to 99 years for um, and there were extensive, multiple DWIs. And um, it's just really sad. There's mental illness, but there's still, she is a danger to society. But it's just really sad for the girls and for the mothers. So. I have one joy I 
have a I have a concern, um, and it's it's one that I've in part dedicated my professional life to, um, and it's something that you, as a society you have to be ever vigilant for, um, which is intellectual freedom, and I'm watching in part of a community that has been under siege, first in the public schools, next in the public libraries, and it's starting to it's starting to impact me where I am now. And it's it's troubling because certainly the individuals, stewards, um, uh, fear for their positions. Um, but they're also, some of them are, are, are starting to become real for, for their freedom um, for being imprisoned and um, being accused of, uh, of things that where, where they feel that they only provided freedom and intellectual freedom for the people that they're serving. Uh, so I'm, um, I've been personally impacted by this, and I have to decide where I fit in this, in the bigger scheme of this inter interaction, but I also am deeply concerned for my colleagues and for the people that we serve. You can try. Okay. Uh, maybe I can add some context to that. Um, I think Jess is talking very much in the big picture, and I'm sure you've heard about. Uh, okay, I'm sure you've heard about uh, situations in uh, Oklahoma. I think it was and elsewhere where uh, public librarians are uh, being accused of all sorts of things uh, in terms of simply having books on the shelves that talk about uh, uh, trans rights and things like this that, that give very real depictions of what this means to, to teenagers and this sort of thing. Um, and you also probably, well, you may not know, but recently um, our lieutenant governor has spoken out against tenure in public higher education institutions. And what you also may not know is that our local Texas a and University libraries um, are being reorganized in such a way as to remove all faculty positions from that part of the institution, meaning there would be no tenure for librarians at all, uh, meaning that their academic freedom in the long term is uh, absolutely under, under question. Um, and this, this is impacting uh, my life as well as everyone else there that's working at the, uh, at the libraries um, and faculty or not because because their status as part of the institution um, will be more be impacted. So, uh, thank you for, for
Sorrows and for the Ukrainian resistance, which we all should be supporting. Uh, if anybody needs uh, help, or wanna, wanna, you want to donate or you want to uh, invest more in the Ukrainian refugee situation, uh, I can send you links. Um, we have them. So, thank you all so much. Please don't talk at work. <laughs> Remember the way of the wind and breathe and blow. Remember the way of the fire, sparkle and glitter and glow. Remember the way Please join me in extinguishing the chalice. The words are up here on the wall. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we gather together again. I want to thank Molly. Thank you all for playing. Thank you all for doing uh, what she does. <laughs> thank, you, thank Allison for doing what she does. John do, for doing what he does. Uh, Thank Pam for being our worship associate today. We appreciate all of y'all. Hang around. There's a uh, food and drink.
Ship before it sinks, but we are all in this together. 